Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're getting back into Devil's Reign, to where with this one, after completing the Superior 4 series, we're now going back to a point in time where the Superior 4 was still a secret. And in a little bit, we'll talk about how Otto had originally planned to present the Superior 4 to Wilson Fisk, and we'll also get into the how and why Otto's plans had changed, much like many of Otto's other plans throughout the course of Devil's Reign. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week, and don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. So jumping back in, we pick up right after the fight between Ben Riley Spider-Man and Taskmaster to where throughout this fight, Taskmaster was able to put an inhibitor collar on Ben Riley just before kicking him out the window of the Daily Bugle. And for Ben, who's physically a one-to-one -one clone of Peter Parker, under normal circumstances, his healing factor would have been sufficient enough for him to fight through the pain and at least hold himself together well enough to either swing the safety or in some way or form at least stick the landing. But because of this inhibitor collar, he's not recovering as quickly as he normally would, and as he attempts to web swing in spite of the pain, he ends up dislocating his arm, slowing down his fall ever so slightly to then still end up with a very painful landing. And so at this point, this is also around the time when Doc Ock had brought in the alternate versions of himself and assembled the Superior Four. So keep in mind that those events, they also play out alongside of this portion of Devil's Reign. But at this point with us instead following along with Ben Rowley, we see that he was arrested by a group of Thunderbolts. But when he's taken into custody, they're not able to identify him because one, his face is like lumped up like crazy. And let's be honest, like this guy's not unlocking any iPhones anytime soon but then also they're not able to run prints on them because there are a number of people on the side of the heroes, including people who work in processing at the police department. And for that reason, they're not able to get any information out of Ben, let alone properly arrest him because they really don't have anything to work with. And so then it's here where Johnny Storm and Ben Grimm show up at the precinct, who mind you at this point, they're wanted as well too. But when they come in here and they tell these guys like, look, we're here to do the right thing and we're taking Spider-Man. And really with any way you look at it, regardless of these officers believe whether they agree with Mayor Fisk or they're just doing this because it's their job and they're sworn to uphold the law. But really at this point, there's nothing these officers can do because even if the officers wanted to crank things up, bullets are just gonna bounce off of the thing. And with Johnny Loki flexing by walking through that door and melting it, he's kind of letting them know that he's at a high enough temperature to where he's not worried about any smoke either. And it's for that reason here where they just grab Ben Riley Spider-Man and they just walk out the front door with him. And then it's here where we jump over to Luke Cage, who at this time is making his first speech as far as letting the people of New York know that he plans to run for mayor, which like we've seen before for the heroes, this is their solution to combating Mayor Fisk. Because now with Fisk being mayor, they really don't have any other options. And if any of the heroes here have got a shot at being mayor after all of the superhero mudslinging that Mayor Fisk has done, then the best candidate is Luke Cage. <laughs> and with saying that, I would love to see like some superhero mudslinging commercial ads <laughs> to where at the end you'd see like this message is approved by Mayor Fisk. But then also here alongside of Luke, you got Foggy Nelson, who not only has been representing a lot of the heroes who have been unfairly arrested, but he's also helping out Luke Cage with his campaign to where at this time he's been a huge help by working with the district attorney and making sure that Luke is not being chased by the Thunderbolts like all the other heroes because he's involved with this election, which is something I just imagine would make this whole thing a lot more difficult. Like just imagine Luke Cage running up to the microphone and saying, vote for me, and then taking off cause 10 Thunderbolts is behind him. <laughs> like that would be ridiculous. But then it's here where Mayor Fisk pays a visit to Zebediah Kilgrave, the purple man, who like we've seen, Mayor Fisk has been using his power this whole time with the help of Otto Octavius. And at this point, Kilgrave, he's not really impressed with what Mayor Fisk is doing because the Kilgrave, he lost a finger just for Mayor Fisk to be able to brainwash some voters. And to him, that's a bit underwhelming because like if you're going to take a finger, man, at least part the sky with that thing. But Mayor Fisk, he lets Kilgrave know that what he's seeing here, like this is just a small piece of a much bigger plan. But Kilgrave's not buying that. He tells Fisk that this is about Daredevil. And he believes that all of this is just Wilson Fisk going after Daredevil, much like any time before. But then it's here where Fisk, he lets in Kilgrave on the truth concerning his issue with Daredevil at the moment. And Fisk lets him know, like at one point he knew Daredevil's identity, but now he doesn't because something was done to him. And with hearing this, Kilgrave, he more or less finishes his sentence. And he tells Fisk like, yeah, it's like the information 
situations buried in your mind like behind a deep fog. And as it turns out, Kilgrave knows this because he feels it too. But not just that, but he recognizes this as his own power, which from there leads Fisk to believe that this was done by Kilgrave. But Kilgrave's like, no, this is a more deluded form. Like this was done by his children. And with hearing that, for Fisk, a light bulb just goes off over his head. And it's here where he calls Otto Octavius over at the Baxter building to see if he can round up Zebediah's kids and use them in the psycho prism to amplify its power. And of course, Doc Ock, he's like, yeah, no doubt, that'll definitely work. But then when Fisk is like, okay, great, well, I'm gonna need you to round up them kids. And right there, Doc Ock is like, nope, I'm gonna stop you right there, big dog. Because at this point, Otto Octavius, he's fulfilled his side of the agreement. But even still, Ock, he's gracious enough to say like, okay, I'll modify the machine. But as far as running around and rounding up all the children of Zebediah, Otto just lets him know like he has better things to do with his time. And he says this without necessarily going into the details of the whole Autoverse thing, because at this point in time, the Superior Four, they're still kind of a secret. And we'll talk about why in a little bit. But much like we see with Kilgrave expressing to Mayor Fisk, and also like we've heard Otto mention before, he believes Mayor Fisk is playing the small game of, oh, let's take over the city. While Otto at this point has his eyes on something much bigger. But then from here, we go back over to the Avengers mansion, like down in the sub basement. And it's here with the heroes, like they're aware that at this point early on, like the numbers for Luke, they're not looking good. And at first they kind of make the assumption that Wilson Fisk, he scared the people into voting for him. But then Jessica Jones, she's like, well, they voted for him before. It's not too far off that they vote for him again. And on top of that, Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk, she points out that Mayor Fisk had made some legitimate points within his campaign. But even with this being the case, they've all seen for themselves like how hard the people are rocking with Luke Cage. And quickly for Jessica Jones, even with her giving Mayor Fisk the benefit of the doubt, she then quickly realizes like, wait, okay, this whole thing feels familiar. And it's here where she lets them know that this is Zebediah Kilgrave. Because aside from them being well aware of the many people who are rocking with Luke Cage, with them seeing the response online to a speech going viral and outside of the polls everyone's showing support but aside from that part making the numbers look strange Jessica recognizes the influence of Zebediah Kilgrave better than anyone and it makes sense because of their history that she would recognize the signs of his influence but with her saying this and letting the others know that somehow Mayor Fisk is using Kilgrave's power to influence the voters and cheat the system and right away Daredevil's like we gotta stop this dude but Captain America he lets them know that they gotta pump their brakes because if by any chance these guys are wrong and they attack the mayor then that alone will just make everything worse because right away they'll just be considered terrorists regardless if they succeed or not if the grounds of what they believe just isn't 100% solid and it's here where Daredevil's just like look I'm gonna go we gotta stop Fisk and he lets Cap know that he's gonna do this either with or without him and so after this, we then see the children of Zebediah Kilgrave. To where at this point, they know that they're being hunted down and they've come to the decision that they have to go after their father and find him before the Thunderbolts find them. But at this point, they really just need a place to lay low for the night so they can make their move tomorrow. But while they're out here kind of ducking in the alleys, this older woman asks them like if they need help because to her, she just sees a bunch of kids out here in the alley by themselves without an adult. And she has no clue that they're wanted fugitives plotting to kill their father. But when this lady comes along to see if these kids are okay, one of the children of Zebediah, he starts to mind control this woman. But then the older son, Joe, he stops this and he tells the older lady like, yes, we just need a place to stay for the night. And it's here where she tells him like okay cool you guys can stay with me and when joe's asked like why he did this instead of just letting the other one control her mind and make the lady give them a place to stay and it's here where joe is just like the lady was already offering help and sometimes instead of just controlling people left and right they should learn to embrace the moments to where people just genuinely offer them help when the other kid hears joe say this he's more or less like i hear what you're saying but right now we plot murder and we need our moves sealed tight <laughs> like that kid he's on demon time right now <laughs> like somebody check the clock but then also at this point after the events of the devil's reign winter soldier tie-in where we had seen mayor fisk was staying at gracie mansion to where towards the end of that issue the mansion had just been torn to pieces and i mean it's still salvageable but it's not in the condition where somebody could live there at the moment but it's because of what we had seen in that tie-in since then wilson fisk has been spending his nights in city hall and that's why the heroes grouped up and made their way here to make their move on mayor fisk but even still at this point they're not sure what they're gonna do with them like they know they're not gonna kill him but even still they can't allow him to just continue to control the minds of the people in new york and who knows whoever else and i mean we know but they don't know but for me if i was one of the heroes and i was there i'd have just been like look we don't know what we're gonna do but i'll tell you right now i'm not carrying them because <laughs> old Willie boy he, he's dense 
but while they're having this conversation and figuring out the plan, they are just blindsided by the Superior Four. And when this happens, there's like a few twists that are just unfolding here back to back to back. Because for one, the Superior Four, who for one, their tone is very different in this series versus the tie-ins. But for the Superior Four, they're here because they plan to kill Wilson Fisk so that alongside of Otto's multiversal crusade, Otto Octavius would also take New York from Fisk as well. And we find out how exactly he had planned to do this when Otto Ghost Rider goes after Iron Man, and Iron Man's just like, back, back, I did what you asked, stay away. And with the way that this happens, like right away it looks like Tony Stark, like he's been playing both sides. But as it turns out, this is not Tony Stark, it's the Chameleon. And it's here where we find that Otto was planning to kill Wilson Fisk and use the Chameleon later to kind of slip into the seat of Mayor so that alongside of what Otto's already planning to do on a multiversal scale, he would also control the seat of the Mayor here. And just as a reminder, at this point, in comparison to what we had seen within Superior 4, at this point, Otto Octavius, he's still kind of figuring out what he's doing with us seeing that at first he wanted to do like a Council of Reeds, but like what we've seen for Otto, as he gets new information, his plans change. But for Otto, for a long time, from when he accepted this deal with Mayor Fisk, we discover that he had already planned to take Fisk out. But with Otto not knowing that the heroes were going after Fisk on this same night, and right away he switches his plans here, from killing Fisk to now saving New York, from these heroes who look like they were about to kill the mayor. But with this happening, the heroes, they're just overwhelmed by the superior four. And for that reason, these guys gotta fall back quick. And when this happens, like all the heroes, they're ready to go. Like everybody except for Daredevil. And Miles just jumps on him like, dude, what are you blind? We gotta go. <laughs> well, he ain't say it exactly like that. Cause really and truly this team of heroes, they're just not equipped for this. And for that reason, they fall back so they can fight another day. But then after this, we then go over to Foggy Nelson, to where we see him making his way back to his office to burn the midnight oil, with him having a lot on his plate. But when he walks into his office, two black suits is waiting on him, and they put the hurting on him bad. Because their boss, Wilson Fisk, doesn't like the progress that Foggy's been making, so he sent a couple suits to put the hurt on Foggy to keep him from helping the heroes any further. And so now real quick, I wanna give a special shout out to all the patrons, Thank you guys for all your support. And for anyone who's new here, who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so we can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.